Uh, welcome back everyone. Now, judging from this introduction, you might think that this is another video about controller designs. That was published about a year ago, so this time I decided to illustrate a step-by-step -step roadmap to properly wire up your self-made ROV. But before I get started, I'd like to give credit to homebuildrovs.com because the wiring diagrams are based on this website. I didn't come up with them, they did. And they did a really fine job. So I'm just here making sure that more people can benefit from this free design. So what's the principle behind wiring an ROV? Well, frankly, you have three engines and each one can do two things, going forward or backward. Hence, there are six independent actions that have to be controllable by you, the operator. So let's start with a basic design like this. Each engine gets its own independent controller, allowing you to steer the ROV in three dimensions. Up, down, left, right, forward and reverse. And in a nutshell, this is the entire diagram. Three engines which are connected to three individual double pole double throw switches. The switches on the other hand are connected to a 12 volt power source. And as you follow the diagram here, you notice that the lower connectors of the switch receive a positive negative polarity. From there, an additional power line is crisscrossed over to the upper pair of connectors, giving it a negative positive polarity. The remaining middle connectors deliver the power to the engines depending on the setting of the switch. That's it. Don't forget an adequate fuse based on the maximum current of the engines that you, that you have. And you're also welcome to further exploit your tether with uh, other devices such as lighting and so forth. However, using a joystick to steer your ROV, that's what it's all about. Now in order to show you what you're in for, this is what it looks like yeah, when a person <clears throat> of limited electrical skills rises up to the challenge. But even though it might look a bit shaky, it gets the job done, nice and true. So as promised, let me give you a step-by-step -step procedure in order to make this work. Step one. Now remember when I said three engines require two independent actions each. That is why we have six single pole, single throw switches here. Those close a circuit of power when you push them. In other words, they turn your will into an electronic response. So connect them each to your power source on the calm intake. And as you can see on the pictures with the red plugs, those are the ones which are the calm intake. This first step allows power to reach your controllers. So when you press down on the diving or surfacing buttons here on the left or handle your joystick, they conduct this incoming power. Like so. Step two. Now check out the blue plugs on the pictures. They are connected to the NO exits of the controller switches. I mean, the incoming power has to go somewhere, right? So where are they going? They go to three pairs of 12 volt relays onto one side of the coils of the relays. These activate the relay when the controller switch is pressed. Now just for orientation, here on the left are the relays for the vertical thruster for diving and surfacing, the middle one for the right engine and the last one for the left engine. Now this is a non-particular order. As long as you remember which relay serves what purpose, you'll be fine. And if you made any mistakes with a little trial and error, you'll easily locate any mistakes you might have made along the way. Step three. Now the more perceptive of you may have already noticed without a second polarity, nothing will happen. And you're right. That's why the other polarity is constantly connected to the other plug of the relay coils. That's the uh, brown line right here. And after this, you are already able to activate all of your relays with your joystick and your diving and surfacing buttons. So at this point, you'd already be able to duplicate this. You can hear the clicking of the relays and also see the green LEDs lighting up whenever the joystick is activating it. So, so far we managed to generate a control system. So let's start in getting some electricity from the power source into the relays and from there finally to the ROV. Step four. 
Take your adequately fused 12 volt power source and connect it to the first relay. Now keep in mind you can also use an independent power source for each engine, especially if you have engines drawing more than 2 amps each. But that's up to you, of course. Now just for orientation, in this diagram the upper relays control the diving and forward motion, and the lower ones control surfacing and backward thrusting. So each engine needs power. So we give it to them, just like on the first one. You can spread it in from one relay to the next, or connect each one directly to the shared or individual power source. Keep the fuse in mind. Now for shoots and giggles you can also put in a speed controller that is fit for the engine current and voltage. Once again your choice, one for each or one for all, you decide. Step 5. Here we connect the forward and diving relays with the backward and surfacing relays. Just like before, that is made by crisscrossing the polarity. Make sure you attach the wires exactly as shown here. This way the power flows to the second relay whenever the first relay is turned off. Step 6. Once again we connect the relays. In this constellation the power flows straight to the ROE from the activated first relay through the switched off second relay. That is also why activating both diving relays does not cause a short circuit. They just cancel each other out. It's pretty nifty, huh? Finally, step 7. At this point you only have two pins left. Those are the ones for your engines, or better yet for your tether. And you are finished. Now for a quick recap, steps 4 through 7. This is what the wiring looks like for the actual ROV power distribution. Of course, for visual simplification, the controller coil wiring and the outgoing wiring to your tether are simply not shown here. So, to sum it up, this plus this plus this plus this equals this. Oh yeah. Now that's what we're talking about, an easy to steer ROV. And as I said before, you can exploit your 8-line CAD cable further for lightning or any other device at your discretion. If you're intrigued by the lightning seen here or by the self-made depth gauge indicator, feel free to watch my other video on my channel called A German Engineer. Now if you have any questions, please leave a comment. It's always fun to be of assistance of any ongoing projects out there. So don't be shy. Thank you for watching. And stay healthy, stay safe, and thanks for the like that you gave. Bye-bye.